War Eagle War Report family, we are back with another great edition of Facts and All. The rapid fire question is right here for you, and we just want to know what the answer is. Is it facts or is it not? Fellas, y'all ready to get straight into this? Yeah, yep. let's go, let's go, let's go. Facts or not, nah, Brian Harson will be named SEC Coach of the Year this year. I'm going nah on this one. I think it'll be close. I think he'll be in the running. I think his name will be in the mention. But what it really boils down to is, can Harson fix Bo Nix or not? If Bo Nix turns into an all-SEC quarterback, Brian Harson is definitely the coach of the year. I don't necessarily see that happening. I think that Bo can make some big strides this year, right? But he's an offensive head coach. So as an offensive guru, he will be judged by how we do on offense. You know, I think that they'll make some good strides this year, but I'm not sure it's going to be SEC head coach of the year material. So I'm going to go now nah on this one. I'm going to say nah as well. And I actually have Auburn finishing eight and four this season. And usually that's going to be kind of tough to win coach of the year. You may be in the running. I think Brian Harson actually wins coach of the year during his tenure at Auburn and actually quite soon. But this year, I'm going to go with nah. They're going to favor some other guy up north who may get it this year. But I'm going to go nah here. Facts. Oh, he wins it because we beat teams that we have not been beating. I'm seeing a nine and three season. I've said it since he got hired, but how we get that nine and three is by knocking off Georgia. How we get that nine and three is by knocking off Georgia. I am calling it way ahead of time. Now, if we beat Penn State, then that means I'm saying we're going to lose to Alabama <laughs> and um, and LSU. But hey, we beat Georgia. We knocked them off the path to get to the SEC championship game, and we look much better in the in the games that we lose. I think that's coach of the year stuff. That's what I'm saying facts. I'm going nah on this one. Listen, uh, if Jimothy didn't win it last year and he definitely deserved it, then uh, you know, then Harson's going to have to pretty much go undefeated to get it this year. Uh, so I, I'm gonna go nah on this one. All right, guys. Facts or no? Auburn will be four and zero. In the month of September, I'm gonna go facts on this. I guess I don't. I'm not even really ready to call the Penn State game yet. They better be three and one. All right, let's just be clear about that. You know, if they if we're not at least three and one, we got a problem early in the season. Uh, I'm not really ready to call a Penn State game, but I'm not ready to pick us to lose yet. So I'm gonna go facts. My heart wants to say facts, but my brain says no. Nah. And the reason I'm saying nah is because Bo will definitely be our starter, and Bo on the road has not been a good thing. So uh, that's not uh, that's, a fact, that's not meant yeah. to take a shot at this young man. But until I can know for certain that he is going to play markedly better on the road, I cannot confidently say that we can go into Happy Valley and win that game with any certainty. So I think three and one is a realistic outcome for the month of September with us having figured out some things and made, making significant strides towards being a better team headed into SEC play. So I'm going to say now nah on this one. I'm going to say nah here as well. And this is not that tough for me. Again, I previously stated that I think Auburn goes eight and four. But what will be impressive about this eight and four year is that Auburn gets better as the season goes on. And you begin to see them play better on the road with teams like Texas A&M down the road. But I think starting off being in a hostile environment on the road, this will be a new test for a brand new team under this coaching staff. And I think they will probably struggle getting out of Happy Valley with the win. Three and one is nothing to scoff at. I'm going with that, and I'm going to say nah here. I'm saying facts. Now, I've been on record many times saying nine and three is what we'll get. That nine and three is kind of dependent on us coming out of September four and oh, because between Bama, AM, Georgia, LSU, what are the chances that we win two of those games? I think AM and Georgia are the most likely W's there. I don't like our chances against Alabama and at LSU. So we got to come out of September 4 0. And I'm going to say facts. Yes, we do it. All right, fellas. Facts or not, nah, Auburn lands a top 50 overall recruit in the 2022 recruiting cycle. I'm going to say facts. 
after that stellar, well not stellar, but impressive nine and three season I keep talking about, <laughs> we would have put forth enough evidence that this coaching staff is competent, has turned the corner from the previous coaching staff, and has put players on a path to be drafted and drafted highly by the NFL, partially because of a change in offensive system. So I'm saying yes, that recruit will either come on the offensive line or mm. defensive line. The two most important position groups on the field anyway. I think that shows a change of priority for the Hartson staff as opposed to the previous staff. So I'm saying facts. Well, I'm going big facts here. We definitely going to pull up that uh, that grade and get them top 50s up in here next year. No. I said this country as I possibly could, but it's still facts. It don't matter how country that thing is. It's going to happen. I'm going facts with a lot of hope. I certainly hope so. I think that recruiting is the lifeblood of college football. And so, you know, we lucked into a top 50 overall recruit in the 2021 cycle. That's going to have to become somewhat of a normal thing moving forward. So I'm going facts. I think that if Harson can have a good showing on the field in terms of development and moving this team forward, top 50 recruits will want to have a chance to come start at a program like Auburn in 2022. So, yes, facts. I'm going for a sweep here, and I'm going to say facts as well. I believe once the dead period gets lifted and the coaching staff actually gets to interact with kids, get them on campus, get them the feel of the Auburn family, the environment, and actually see a pretty improving product on the field this upcoming season, I think that they have what it takes to land a top 50 recruit in this upcoming recruiting cycle. I'm going facts on this one. Okay, fellas, facts or not, Auburn basketball will have a better win percentage than Auburn football in 2021. It's a tough one for me. I'm sitting here trying to do the numbers in my head, but I am going to have to go gnaw on this. I think that it is more likely that we have a higher win percentage in football this year. I don't think it's by much. Let me be clear on that. I, I'm not ready to go nine, 10 wins yet for the football season. Uh, I just think that we're going to be slightly better than 500 and the basketball team is going to be hovering closer to 500. Uh, I do think that we make some upsets in the back half of the season in basketball and, and we get into the tournament, all that other stuff. We're not talking about all that, but for right now, nah. I am going to go nah. And it starts at my, again, nine and three prediction for the football team, <laughs> which is a 75% win percentage. So, for them to for the basketball team to have a 75% win percentage that means they have to win 24 games or so roughly mm. and that's steep considering you're automatically going to lose both guys who play point guard for you it's a pivotal position even if you've got somebody supremely talented coming in to take their place they need time to figure it out so i'm going to fortunately it's not unfortunate but nah the basketball team's not going to have a higher winning percentage I'm going nah here, and that's just currently there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of who's going to replace our biggest contributors from last season. Now, of course, Auburn is bringing in a great, impressive recruiting class, but even those kids have to grow within that system and that program. I think with Auburn going eight and four, my prediction on football, that means Auburn has to win it. I think more than 20 games uh, in the basketball season this upcoming year. I'm not sure if they can do it. I hope they can, but as of now, I'm going to say no. Nah. I'm going to go no nah on this one, uh, and here's why. I start the math at what are the chances that both football and basketball will go 500 and how, fi how far over 500 will each team go? Um, right. I think that it is highly likely that um, over basketball, that football can have a nine and three or ten and two season. Uh, more so with all the change that we have going on in basketball, that they will be significantly over five hundred. Uh, Bruce Pearl is a superb developer of talent, uh, but he's got a lot of things stacked against him. Losing Sharif and uh, losing JT Thor, Thor possibly. So I'm going to say that the football team is going to have a better win percentage than the basketball team. So it's a nah for me. All right, you know what time it is. We got to get into our fan question of the week. This week's fan question comes courtesy of at K Polos and asks, facts or not, nah, Auburn will have over 20 sacks as a team this year. What are we feeling like? I'm going facts on this one, baby. Derek Mason is going to start a sack party and get ready for guys to get off the edge for us to pressure the quarterback and because we have locked down corners 
Drayshawn Miller is coming over. With the guys that we have coming back, combined with the guys that we have coming in, I expect there to be no room for people to operate in the secondary, which means that receivers won't be open and our ends and linemen will be able to get to the quarterback and sack them, baby. Sack party on the way in 2021. I'm going facts on this one. Auburn leads the league in sacks in 2020. Hmm. I'm going to go facts. I believe Auburn, for the first time in a few years, actually generates pressure coming off the edge this year. Also, I can see Auburn getting a lot of coverage sacks with how well we play on the back end of the defense. I think our secondary is poised to have a great season, and I believe that because of the inability of the opposing offense to find re open receivers, that's going to lead to a lot of coverage sacks, as well as us generating pressure. I think we get 20 easily. I'm going facts on this one. Facts. To get 20 sacks in a season, 12 games plus at least one Wait, are we counting the bowl game? I'm counting the bowl game because that makes it easier math. So that's just over <laughs> one and a half sacks per season, 1.5 per be exact, excuse me, per game. That's definitely doable. Listen, that's garbage time. It, listen, anything can happen in a football game. You have to be extremely inept not to get at least 1.5. I don't want to talk about our previous seasons. So yes, <laughs> fact, we will get at least 20 sacks this year. I'm going facts. I was just a guy. I was trying to give y'all a little pause, try to be dramatic, but I'm going to go facts on this. Uh, I just don't see us being in a scenario where we don't rack up a lot of sacks in those cupcake games, right? We're going to play a couple of teams who are going to be very pass happy in Mississippi State and in uh, Ole Miss, right? So we're going to have more opportunities to get to a, a guy who's going to be standing back there. Um, I just think that we're going to have an improved ability to be able to get to the quarterback this year. And if, uh, if we don't do that with those cupcakes included, then it's definitely going to be a, de a season where the defense is not going to be performing up to standard. Got to go facts on this. All right, folks, that wraps up another great edition of Facts or Not. We appreciate all the comments that you all are going to put right down here debating your answers, Facts or Not, to these questions. But we want to hear from you about questions that you want to hear us answer. So, as always, we need you to hit us up on Twitter, hashtag Facts or Not. You're going to at The War Report, and you're going to tell us what you want, and we're going to answer it right here live. Outside of that, you need to make sure you're following us on all of the social media platforms. That is at The War Report on Instagram and Twitter. We also have the Facebook page. That's The War Report. And we're on TikTok, TW Report. That's it. That's all for this week. We are signing out, as always, forever. War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle.